All right, so quick review of some stuff we've already been talking about. We, we know the nucleus is where the protons and the neutrons are at. You guys have all known that for a long time. What's a nucleon? It's a proton or a neutron. It's just a word for either one. The atomic number in this class, they're going to symbolize as Z. And that always tells you what? Number of protons. It's always uh, usually going to be written right here in our atomic symbol, nuclear symbol. The mass number, in this class they're going to call it A. And the mass number is uh, protons plus neutrons. And that's going to be written right here. So if we want to know the number of neutrons in something, we're going to take the mass number minus the atomic number. In this case, 235 minus 92 or 14 minus 6. So these are called our, our nuclear symbols. And isotopes, we know, are atoms of the same element with different what? Different numbers of neutrons, different masses. So this would be carbon-14, but that's also carbon, this is carbon-12, so different isotope. Um, it's the same element because it has the same what? Atomic number. That determines the identity, always. The, the mass of a neutron and the mass of a proton are essentially the same, very slightly different, not much. Um, a unit for either one of those is an AMU, an atomic mass unit. Now, an atomic mass unit is, is typically, that's, that's the exact value given to it. It's based on the element carbon. It's one twelfth of the mass of a carbon atom, a carbon-12 atom. But essentially, we're going to use an AMU to be equal to either one of these, the, the mass of a proton or the mass of a neutron, because they essentially are. Also, the, the strong nuclear force is the force that holds the, the nucleus together. It's mostly caused by the neutrons. You know that the protons in that nucleus want to do what? Push away. They want to repel because they're all positively charged. The strong nuclear force helps to, helps to hold them together. And you can see that as we go here, this blue line represents what it would be like if an atom had equal numbers of protons and neutrons. With the small atoms, that's pretty much true. But as you get bigger, what happens? It takes more neutrons to hold it together. This red line this red curve shows you the actual pattern of stable nuclei. And as they get bigger, they need more neutrons to hold it together. One of the last things we talked about in here last time was this idea of binding energy. And the idea is this. If you add up, if you took, say, uranium, and you added up the masses of all the protons and all the neutrons that are in there. And you compared that to the real mass of a uranium atom. What would you find? If you added up, for me, see the out there, we boil them. If you added up 92 protons and whatever 238 minus 92 neutrons are, how would that compare to the actual mass of a uranium atom? Yeah, the, the real mass is actually a little bit less than what you calculated ought to be. Because what happens to some of that mass when you put it all together? It's lost, it's converted to energy. And that energy is called the binding energy. It's the energy that holds it together. So the difference between the predicted mass and the real mass is sometimes called the mass defect. And that's actually proportional to the binding energy. The more mass defect there is, the more binding energy there is. Uh, one AMU of missing mass, mass defect, is equivalent to a pretty, pretty good deal of energy. 931.5 million electron volts of energy. Mass can be converted to energy. A little bit of mass converted converts to a whole lot of energy. That's where we're going there. So if you want to calculate the, the binding energy of something, you take its mass defect, the amount of mass that seems to be missing, 
and multiply that by 931. What's that big M there stand for? In front of the EV. Mega. Mega electron volts per AMU. And as we said last time, the greater the binding energy of an atom, the more stable it is. The more binding energy, the more stable. What that caused to happen is that causes some small atoms to fuse together. And it causes some bigger atoms to fission apart. Because there's this, this certain size atom that has the most binding energy. I'm going to show you that on this next diagram. You ought to see that atoms somewhere in this area have the most binding energy, which means they're the most like they're the most stable. So atoms that are smaller than that, these atoms, they will often fuse together to make atoms this size. And atoms that are bigger than this, they fission apart, they break apart to get to this size. This is the optimum stability area for an atom, right in that area, where they have the most binding energy. Picture must have been hyperlinked. All right, now, most of what we're going to concentrate on today is, is radioactive decay. And we know that's when a nucleus basically starts to fall apart, right? Because it's unstable. What's transmutation? You got one. Yeah, it's when, when an element undergoes radioactive decay and it becomes a different element. Changes. Um, there's some symbols involved in these equations that you got to know. Um, for example, this little symbol right here, one, zero, and an N. That's a neutron. A proton. We can show one, one, and H. Or one, one, and P. An electron is zero, minus one, and an E. An alpha particle, which is the first kind of uh, radioactive decay we're going to talk about, is 4, 2, and HE, or 4, 2, and alpha. So it's like that. A beta particle is essentially a high speed electron, so it has to have the same symbol as an electron. Or you can use the Greek letter beta. Looks like a B. And then a positron, which we may or may not get to today, is sort of like an electron, but a positive version of an electron. So notice it's zero, positive one. Positively charged part. Those symbols are going to show up in the next few things. So let's, let's go a little bit further here. In alpha decay, you have an unstable nucleus that essentially shoots out this particle called an alpha particle. And the particle looks like this, 4, 2, alpha, meaning that it's got two what? Two protons and two neutrons, right? So that's, a, that's a mass number. So 4 minus 2 neutrons, 2 protons, 2 neutrons, which the reason we sometimes draw it as 4, 2, HE is because essentially what is an alpha particle? It's the nucleus of a helium atom. What's missing? They, they have the electrons. It's just it's the nucleus of a helium atom. It's shooting out at high speeds. Uh, very high speeds. That's what makes it dangerous is the energy that it has. Here we're looking at the way um, a nuclear equation for alpha decay looks. Here we have radium. It's got 88 protons. Its a atomic mass number is two or mass number is 226. When it undergoes alpha decay, it gives off an alpha particle. Now, on the test, they, uh, on a question like this, they may not give you this element. They may not even give you these numbers. They may just leave a blank here. And say, what would that be? What does that element have to be? The thing is, the atomic numbers and the mass numbers on both sides have to add up. So if this was 88 and this is 2, the number down here has to be what? 86. And if this is 4, and that's 226, 
the number up here has to be 222. So then you go to the periodic table and you look up element 86. And when you find element 86, you know it's radon. So it's kind of like a fill in the blank. This is really easy stuff. We'll see some more examples in a minute. Same thing down here. If this is 92 and this is 238, and they tell you it's alpha decay, you know you've got to put an alpha particle. So you know that 92 minus 2 would give you 90. 238 minus 4 gives you 234. And then you just go to the periodic table and you look up element 90 you find its story. Now that's alpha decay. An alpha particle is pretty massive. Of the particles we're going to talk about, it's the most massive one. Can it penetrate through a lot of stuff? Not really. Uh, it can't even penetrate like your clothing. Barely fit clothing, it can't penetrate. So if there were a lot of alpha particles floating around in the room, as long as they weren't inside us and we were covered, we'd be okay. Now if you breathe them in, and they could affect your lungs and stuff like that, that, that would be bad. But, the, but of, of the of the particles, they're the, the least penetrating of the, of the radioactive particles we'll talk about. Another type of radio, radioactive decay is beta decay. Now here's carbon-14. We all know it's radioactive. Carbon-14, what will happen in carbon-14 is that one of these neutrons, by the way, how many neutrons does it have? It's got eight. One of those neutrons sort of splits and leaves behind what? A proton and an electron. Notice that this started out at six, but not seven. All of a sudden it got a new proton from somewhere because one of the neutrons up here became a proton and to become, for a neutron to become a proton, what's the neutron got to get rid of? A negative. Because it started off neutral, it ended up positive, it's got to give away a negative. So it shoots out this high speed electron, which is what a beta particle is. But again, note the numbers add up. 7 plus minus 1 is 6. 14 plus 0 is still 14. That's the beta decay of carbon 14. What? Okay, no, you don't still have. Here you have only seven neutrons, but here you had eight. This is this is protons plus neutrons, right? So that's why that number didn't change. It's both. Again, these these can penetrate maybe slightly better than alpha particles, but if you have on pretty some a pretty thick layer of something, they're not going to be able to penetrate too deep. Most of the time, whenever we have any of these kinds of decays, what else is getting shot out? Energy. And what do we call that? That really high energetic, not particles, but just high light, high frequency light. Yeah, but what kind of uh, radiation do we call it? Gamma. A lot of times you'll see gamma written, um, it's sort of the, the Greek letter gamma sort of looks like a Y. And you'll see it written like this, meaning what? It's got no mass, at least not in any mass that we can measure. But it's really highly energetic. If I had something shooting out gamma rays and I pointed it at Thomas, what would it do? It'd go straight through Thomas and cause some damage as it did. And then it'd probably go through that wall and go through Miss Ashmore and whatever else is over there on the other side. Okay, It can penetrate. Of all the types of radiation, gamma is the one that can penetrate. And as it goes through, what's it doing to the things it's going through? It's burning them. It's, uh, if, if it's going through something alive, it's potentially causing mutations in the DNA. It's, it's nasty. All right, another type of... Um, Another type of um, ra radioactive decay kind of thing, or at least transmutation, is something called electron capture. Uh, sometimes what can happen is that an element like cobalt in this case 
pulls in an electron, almost like a beta particle. Yep. High speed beta particle, essentially, into the nucleus. And notice that that, that transmutes cobalt to iron. Now, this thing we haven't seen. Anybody able to tell me what that is? Neutrino. It's a neutrino. It's a really small, really <laughs> small particle with very little mass. That's why it's zero, zero. No, they're, they're learning more and more about them. A lot of times you'll see this written without that neutrino there, depending on the textbook. But it's there. It's just some scientists don't know. A lot of this particle physics is, you know, sort of out there. Uh, but, but again, notice that in electron capture, essentially what's happening, the nucleus is capturing this beta particle, this high-speed electron, transmuting to a different element. It's rid of a proton. It basically cancels out a proton. Why? Why doesn't it? It, it turns a proton into a neutron, essentially. The proton and the electron fuse and become a neutron. Oh, and that's why neutrons are bigger. Right. Tiny, tiny bit bigger. A neutron is essentially a proton and an electron joined together. So that's a real thing. You're not like making this one. No, no, that's what I'm saying. No. Right. And form a neutron. Because they're attractive. Yes, they're attractive. And, and notice. Notice your atomic number, it is not changing because you still got the same number of particles in the nucleus. It's just that now instead of it being a positively charged proton, because of this electron, it's now a it's now a neutrally charged neutron. Atomic number goes down, mass number doesn't change in electron. It's off the action, it's the reaction, it's the all right, and then one other kind of, of uh, this transmutation stuff is called positron emission. And in positron emission, we're shooting out a positively charged particle. It's almost, it's, it's about the same size as an electron, but it's a positive particle. So essentially, if you look at it, here we had eight protons. Here we had only seven. Because what did that proton do? It gave off its charge, but left behind most of its what? Most of its mass. So essentially, in this case, the proton is converting itself into what? Well, yeah, some energy, but what's what's left behind of it? It's like a neutron. It's like a proton becoming a neutron, essentially. Um, it's shooting out some energy in the form of a positive charge. The mass number, again, is not changing but the atomic number is dropping. And it's shooting off this positively charged positron part. What happens to the electron that left behind? Because there should be one extra electron that doesn't really be. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure anybody does. That's, sometimes you'll see it written this way. Sometimes they'll throw in a neutrino. That's, it, get, it releases energy. It may be in the form of a neutrino, it could be gamma. Um, that that's not going to be important for the balancing part of the equation, so you don't need to worry about it. Where do they find is this all theoretical math, or is no? Some of this is proven. I mean, some of this can be measured. Like from just random experiments with radiation and particle, any of those. Well, I mean, they can they can see it. What element is present? I mean, they can measure that there's magnesium or sodium. That's, that's easy enough to tell. That magnesium is becoming sodium in this case. Well, like one atom of it. Well, I mean, you could do this in a container, so it would be happening fast. So it's measurable. But again, that's positron emission. A proton is essentially becoming a neutron, giving off its positive charge and some, some form of energy. Now, let's look at, yeah, go ahead. What makes proton or split? What makes neutrons? That's a good question. And I don't know that anybody really knows the answer to that. I don't. I mean, this, part, this particle physics stuff is still way out there in terms of what we're learning about it. 
Let's let's fill in the blanks here, because this is the kind of question you're likely to see on a, on an AP exam. What's going on in number one? Alpha decay, right? In alpha decay, uh, we know if this is 226 and this is 4, this has to be 222. If that's 88 and that's 2, this has to be 86. And we go over there and we look up 86, and that's the same example problem we used a minute ago. That's radon. That could be happening underneath your house, right? I mean, the scary part of that is radon is a gas. Radium is a solid. So the, the radioactive gas can seep up into your house and you can breathe it and it can cause lung cancer and all kinds of crazy stuff. Because this is still radioactive and dangerous. All right, this one. What's going on right here? That's a positron emission. But again, this is 19, so this has to be 18. This is 37, this is zero, this still has to be 37. So what element are we looking at? Argon, it transmuted to argon, came argon. Isn't that the alchemy thing, transmuted? No. Uh, it's, it's definitely an alchemy. All right, what's going on here? This is beta decay. Because we know this, this number over here has to be a minus, right? And this number up top has to be a zero because it all has to add up. So we can write an electron or we can put a beta there. That's beta decay. All right, what's going on here? We're adding things together. So that's fusion. We didn't talk much about fusion yet, but those are going together. And all we do is add them up. So one plus three, four. One plus one, two. And what do we got? Yeah. Same kind of thing here. Still got some fusion. Add them up. 27 and 4 is 31. So this has to be 1. 13 and 2. 15. That's 15. So this has to be 0. And what is that? That's a neutron. <laughs> Right here. Uh, again, we're fusing some things. Um, 95 and 2 is 97. Well, here's this zero. So this has to be 97. This is 241 and 4, so that's 245. This is saying two neutrons, so that's two up top so far, right? It's 240, 245 over here, so this has to be 243. So we look at element 97 in the periodic table, and what are we looking at? Berkelium. BK. Or Berkelium. Something like that. Berkelium, right? Um, and the last one down here, now this is one that we'll, we'll spend more time on the next time. This is actually the most common example, maybe the most famous example of fission. It's going to be the way like nuclear bombs work. Because what, what they're doing to, to cause fission to happen is they shoot neutrons at a nucleus, and that causes it to split. Let's add up all these numbers over here. It's going to be uh, 56 and 36. That'd be 92, right? So we know we're dealing with uranium, element 92. Add up the atomic number, the mass numbers, 142 and 91. That would be, what, 233? And then we've got three more over here, so 236. Did I do the math right there? Yeah. It's 235. You have yeah. one already on the left side. Oh, that's right. We got one right here. That's right. That's, that's why that looks weird. So that adds up to be 235. Uranium 235 is the one we want to split. It's the plus neutron. You're, you're shooting neutrons at uranium 235 to cause it to split. It's almost like playing pool and breaking. You're shooting a particle at the nucleus, causing it to fission. Now here's the deal. So, something else kind of unique here. Is that that If you were to take the mass of all the particles over there and all the particles over here, what would you find? If you compared the masses of the left to the right, what would you find? 
right is less massive. The the right is less massive because a lot not not a lot, but some of this mass gets converted to energy. That missing mass, the mass that just seems to disappear, is where all the energy comes from from a nuclear bomb or a nuclear reactor. How much mass is it missing? It's it's just tiny, tiny amounts. One in forty. But but if we go back to the slide we looked at a minute ago. If we go back to here, oh, one AMU of missing mass is equivalent to 931.5 million electron volts, which is a lot of energy. So it only takes a little bit of mass to disappear to give you a huge amount of energy. And that's all I'm saying contributing to the nuclear bomb was his E equals into square. Well, I, I wouldn't say that, but that's he didn't work on the project. That's the core. That's the core of it. I know he didn't work on the project, he, but he. He encouraged Roosevelt to build the bomb. Well, but but basically, he wrote a letter to, to Roosevelt saying, "If we don't, they will." Um, and we didn't want the Germans to get it before we did, because that would have been history would be very different if the Germans had a nuclear bomb before we did. All right, since most people left, we are going to call it there for today. I need to go get ready for testing. Yeah. We will finish up with a couple of um, things about fission and fusion next time and a bunch of example problems. Really, really.